Hi, Jack and Brian. I uh, just wanted to give you all a, an update on my motor. As you can see, it's been running for some time and uh, it's quite down a lot. It's really uh, great. Uh, I just want to say thank you to George and Tom, George Hamster from Netgame Motors and uh, Tom Brunker uh, from Halloween Carbon. I mean, they saw that video that I did with the cleaning of, of the commutator, etc. And they really, um, they, they jumped right in there and they were really helpful, uh, gave me lots of feedback and um, basically you know, really talked me through what was possibly going on with my motor and the noise, etc. It's all quiet now. I ordered some uh, brushes, I uh, got the new brushes, uh, the red top carbon brushes, which I'm uh, pretty excited. I'm going to have to put them in now and, and uh, seat them in now for five days. So uh, I just wanted to let you know, so let you see how the motor is running after uh, after seating it in with the original brushes. And remember how noisy it was. It's quite bright down. It's really, it's really quite great. And I'm expecting. Uh, you know, a much better performance apparently with these uh, split brushes and uh, so I'm going to switch them out, put these in and then seat them as well over uh, you know, the long five day process. As you can see we're right near the motor and it's actually uh, really not that noisy. Um, it's quietened right down, it's really, it's really great. Okay, so I've just replaced all my brushes and um, I'm about to turn on the motor with the new brushes in it, so let's see what kind of a noise it's going to make. I think it's going to be quite rattly. days of this awful noise. Well actually it'll probably get quieter as time goes on. I've had the uh, motor running now with the Helwig brushes in it for just over 20 hours and I just wanted to show you how it's uh, quietened down. It's seating in quite nicely. Well, I ended up building my own battery boxes, after all. In fact, I still haven't finished building all of them. Um, I think I was just a little uh, excited about the prospect of uh, working with the uh, aluminum, aluminium. Uh, and uh, so I decided to go ahead and do that. I ordered some uh, 4x8 sheets of 8th inch stock, I think they called it 14 gauge, and, uh, and some 1 inch angle and uh, it was all pretty easy to cut and I just wanted to show you how, how I went about that. Okay everyone I'm going to attempt to cut this sheet of uh, eighth inch uh, aluminum or as we say in England aluminium. Uh, I've laid it out on a nice flat piece of uh, plywood and then I've got some um, masonite underneath well on top of that uh, so that my blade will go through the uh, aluminium and uh, it won't hurt the plywood underneath but basically it's just a place for the blade to, to go through. So I've got it all set up, measured out and I'm going to attempt to run it uh, with my skill saw and see how that goes.
very nice clean cut. Quite pleased with that. sides on, uh, putting some angle on the corners on the inside and uh, riveting it all in place and then I can then I'll have a box to start welding around all the edges. Rivet. Push that in. Make sure it's through. It is, and then operate it. I'm at the stage now where I'm just uh, putting the bottom on the box, although it looks like I'm putting the top on. I've got it upside down here, just riveting it, and then I'm going to start uh, welding these uh, corners. I'm gradually welding all these edges now, where I've riveted it, uh, the sides on. Uh, I'm trying to get a nice bead, which takes a bit of practice, so I'm going to show you how I'm doing that now. Not the finest of beads, but it'll clean up nicely. So yeah, it just cleans up very, very easily. Like if I want to be a bit fussy, I can even work a little bit more weld into these uh, corners here and then into the holes and then just grind it down a bit if I want with a sanding disc. Here are my battery boxes in the, the rear trunk area. Got my large one there which is uh, now uh, sunken down in that area. And there's another uh, box further up here the back which uh, is going to hold nine batteries and this one down here is going to hold I think it's 24 something like that. I also built a box that's going to hold six batteries I, I was originally going to have it hold eight but because I want to insulate it um, 
insulate around the batteries. I've decided only to put six in this one. And that's suspended underneath the rear seats and is quite nicely out of the way from the the flat plane of the car as you can see I'm therefore going to have to put another three batteries in line in this area here right down the center channel of the vehicle that's what I'm going to do next is build that box and I have the battery box which is in the front uh, which holds eight batteries and that just has to be fixed in now and there's my template for my component shelf which uh, I'm still trying to get the adjustment right on that well that's all I've got for you this week um, so that's me, John Allen, from New York for EVTV. Have another great week.